Lake Worth Drainage District inspectors, we have made this video to show you the various types of structures that we have within the Lake Worth Drainage District. If after you watch this video, should you find yourself unfamiliar with your system, please feel free to call and schedule an appointment. Prior to storm season, we'll be come out to discuss any questions or concerns that you may have regarding your drainage system. For those communities which have operable structures, we have a dedicated storm line. The number is 561-495-4054. Feel free to call this number anytime you feel your community is threatened by a storm. Communities with reclaimed water have agreements with the Lake Worth Drainage District. Part of that agreement requires them to make their operable weir unoperable by removing the wheel portion and storing it either in a clubhouse or the guardhouse, um, but somewhere separate from where the weir is. This is to prevent any type of tampering either by um, teenagers or by um, homeowners who may be thinking that they're doing a good thing and opening the weir up during a storm. They also are required to get special approval from the district and they do that by contacting either the manager or the two assistant managers. Prior to hurricane season, we send each of these, there are five, we send each of the five communities a letter with the cell phone numbers of these three individuals who they can call to get the special approval. Okay, we're at the, the public shopping center at the corner of uh, Woolwright and Jog Road and this is a uh, retention area. Water flows off the roofs, off the parking lot, through this flume and into, into this, what they call a dry retention area. It flows down this swell area towards this control structure. This is a control structure that uh, is basically a fixed structure. There's no operation. And as you can see, you can't see the hole at all. And that's because it's covered up with grass and weeds and a little bit of dirt. If that's restricted, water can't get out as fast as it should. Uh, and that's one of the reasons that you see this debris on top of the grate. Uh, the rain or the water flowed down towards that bleeder, couldn't get through it, so it built up and went over and through this grate. And this is this type of structure you probably need to check even more often than others, probably once a month. You probably need to come out here and make sure this is clear, especially before it rains. So keep that clear, keep this clean, and that's about all you need to do. It's coming, it's coming. Oh, is it? Try this. It's yeah. moving, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Now you can see why it's important to regularly come out and inspect the control structure because it's really difficult to get this lid off and you'll find in a lot of cases when they need this open it's in an emergency situation and you're wasting time trying to remove the lid. So Maintenance is key. Maybe if I got my shovel too and we worked at it. Let me grab my shovel too and I can Oh, there it goes. Oh, Doug, that thing's gonna slip on you. Alright. Uh, this is for informational purposes on maintenance for your weir structure that, that's installed inside the control structure here. These are going to be very difficult for you to do because they're heavy drain grates that are on top of here. And you've got to be very careful when you remove these to be able to maintain the weir bleeder notch that's inside here. You'll find that in a lot of cases the bleeder notch will be clogged with some debris if it's not maintained properly. So this would be your first step in the line of defense against your lake system from flooding. What you want to do is have a device similar to this to be able to lift up these drain grates, but it's very important that you move them in the proper direction, and they are quite heavy. 
because should they fall down in there, it's not fun to get them out. And we've all been there. So after you remove the drain grate, you'll be able to actually look down into your structure and be very careful not to fall in here because it's rather deep. There's a bleeder notch at this point and it's actually operating and what it's doing is it's allowing the water to leave the site and enter into the canal system through a fixed position at the bleeder notch. And in most cases you'll find this bleeder notch will be clogged with debris. Right now, this is it's good and clear so there's nothing from preventing the water to leaving the site. So this is a well-maintained structure. There's nothing blocking it at this point. This will be the second part. We've already removed the gate, made sure that the bleeder notch is clear, but another very important item to consider is a maintenance program for the operation of the, the butterfly valve that's down inside the control structure. This is utilized during emergency releases to allow floodwaters to go to the canal system at an unregulated rate or a faster rate. You'll notice that the community is required to keep it locked. They're provide, they have a key on site, whether it be their property managers or somebody with the board of supervisors for the community. And during times of flood events, with the authorization of the Lake Worth Drainage District, they're allowed to unlock this chain and utilize this butterfly valve and open it so they can allow for the discharge of water at a faster rate if they're experiencing flooding conditions. And again, it's with the authorization of the Lake Worth Drainage District. During emergency situations, you'll find yourself scrambling for the key or something like that. Nothing's working. You have a pair of these. This is what we call a master key. You have that handy and readily available, at least at that point. You can always replace the lock at a later, at a, at a later juncture. But back to the maintenance aspect of it, you're going to want to enter into some sort of program with your maintenance providers, discuss some quarterly period, maybe four times a year, once a month, a couple times a year definitely prior to the storm season. You want to be able to come out here and exercise this structure to make sure that the valve is working as it's intended to do so. And feel free to call on our inspectors if you want to come out and we can go over the motions with you to make sure that everything's operating as it's intended to do. We can give you that advice. Another thing to keep in mind is you're exercising this gate not to over tighten it or over close it because you can actually break the threading or break the sleeve that runs this. We're finding that sometimes could be the case. So if it's really difficult for you to operate, there's more than likely a problem. Okay, we're gonna take you through a scenario now and what we're gonna do is we're in storm mode. We're actually having a flooding event. One of the most critical things for you to determine is to whether or not your water is higher than the canal water. Obviously, if the canal water is higher, and you open up the operable weir, what in essence you will do is flood your property at a faster rate, which you do not want to do. So the first most critical important thing for you to do is determine whether or not you have positive outfall to our system. And in essence, what I'm saying is that your water is higher than the canal water itself. Without positive outfall, it could negatively impact you. Once you have determined that you have positive outfall and you have the authorization from the Lake Worth Drainage District to open the emergency structure, at that point, that would be recommended. It's, it's called a screw gate. Um, in this case, the wheel, the operating mechanism is below the grate, so you have no option uh, but to remove the grate. Once again, as Doug mentioned before, before you do anything, make sure you have positive outfall, meaning that the water on the lake side of the weir is higher than the water on the canal side of the weir. If it's not, then you pretty much don't have to do anything more, just leave it alone. Positive outfall. Once again, here we have to re we have to remove a grate in, even, in order to even get to the operating mechanism. Once again, check and make sure you're sliding it along the supports. In most cases, you can only slide it one way because if you slide it the other way, it's gonna fall down into the control structure. You lift up, you slide it along.
along the supports. And as you can see right now, there's a little water coming through the bleeder. And once again, this bleeder appears to be in good shape, not clogged, but that's to reiterate what Doug said. It's always uh, important to make sure your bleeder Over stays on this open. Side, we could show you there's some staff gauges that are installed inside this control structure. And you'll notice it'll give you some elevational readings, which it's, it's critical. Sometimes we need to know what's your water at. And you can report to us we're experiencing at this point 1650 water on the upstream side and downstream we're right at elevation 16. So you're seeing where there's going to be six inches of difference in elevation. That'll also help you in determining whether or not you have positive outfall. The higher the number, obviously, the higher the elevation, the lower you can tell that the water's flowing down. In this case, similar in nature, except it, in this case, the entire gate is going to come up. In the previous instance, it was just a butterfly valve located within a concrete wall that you're not going to see anything other than uh, additional turbulence maybe in the structure as you open the butterfly valve. In this one, you can actually see the gate rising. And as it rises, the water is going to go underneath the grit, underneath the slide gate at a faster rate, allowing your lakes to drain quicker. Generally speaking, a uh, thing everybody remembers, lefty loosey, righty tighty. So turn it to the left to open, turn to the right, close. And I have to say that is in most cases. I have found a couple cases where it is the exact opposite, where you have a rising stem, uh, but that's very, very rare. In most cases, it's gonna be lefty loosey, righty tighty. And now I'm back to the closed position. Remember what we discussed, you don't wanna over tighten it because you can do damage to the nylon bushing that actually serves on the stem that lifts it up. It's just a threaded stem with a threaded bushing. If you put too much pressure on it, it'll strip it. And once you strip it, then the damage is done. You'll have to do some repairs to the structure, which obviously will be costly. One other important note is you can see the lake here is tied directly to the control structure. But this lake, this community, I'm sorry, this community or subdivision has several lakes and not every lake has a direct tie to our canal system. So it's very important to also ensure that the interconnects, the pipes that connect lake to lake to lake, that eventually gets to the lake that goes to our canal, that those interconnects are kept clear, free flowing, because if they're not, then some internal lake that is not connected to a lake that's connected to the control structure will flood. And the people around that particular lake will flood. So keeping those internal pipes clean is very important. All right, this is an, uh, an example of a flashboard riser. And the reason why they call them flashboard risers is because down here in the water, you'll see there's a board. The most important thing you need to do with these flashboard risers, obviously, is to keep them maintained from any debris getting in front of them because the water needs to flow during storm events. I have an industrial type potato rake that gets the material out from in front of it. And you'll see, as I'm cleaning it, there's something in front of it here that I'm, I'll just pull it out and remove it. You'll also notice that this structure's been retrofitted with these PVC grates and the reason that they're here is because it appears that there may be some carp kept within this lake system for the vegetation control as opposed to using chemicals to treat the aquatic weed vegetation and they're, I think that they're required by permit to have those in place to keep the, the carp from actually leaving the site. I mean, here's a good example of some debris that's in front of the control structure that could render it clogged during times of, of heavy storm events. During storm events, you're going to find out that the water may actually be up into this area here. So it's going to be very difficult for your maintenance personnel to come out and take care of the situation at hand, should there be some clogging in front of this. So what you want to do is, prior to the storm event, come out, give a visual inspection, clean any debris that's in front of it, 
and then continue to monitor it through the storm event. Obviously, if it's a serious storm with a hurricane and things of that nature, you don't want to have your personnel out here. Let the system do what it needs to do. Seek shelter, make sure you're in a safe location, and then after the storm goes away and it begins to subside, come back out, reevaluate, reinspect this structure, make sure there's no debris in front of it, and continue on with your daily operations. We're in a community that has a more standard uh, 60 to 80 foot road right of way that has sidewalk, road, and then a swell system to collect the water off the, the uh, lots and the road, drains into the swell and into this catch basin which collects water and takes it to the lake. As you can see, this swell is in pretty good shape except for that large planting right in the middle of the swell. That, as you can see, significantly obstructs the flow that comes down the swell to this basin. And could, you know, it is going to slow down the flow. It could cause a flooding issue and is not ideal, an ideal situation to have in your swells if your roads are set up in this okay, One more thing, these catch basins can sometimes get clogged with uh, debris, whether it be grass clippings, leaves, sticks, anything of that nature. And if these grates get covered up with debris, uh, the obvious thing is they won't accept the water and your streets and homes will flood. So it's very important that these grates remain clean of all debris. The boards of residential communities um, need to tell us who they've authorized. Um, to maintain and operate their community weirs. This could be a storm team member, it could be board members, it could be a property manager. This information needs to be provided to the Lakewood Drainage District. Um, you can do that by calling me, Rosemary Raymond, at our office number, area code 561-737-3835, or you can email me at Rosemary Raymond, R-O-S-E-M-A-R-Y, R-A-Y-M-A-N at lwdd.net and send me that information. Um, you can also fax us at area code 561-495-9694. Um, this information should be sent every year. However, it's most important that it become part of your community documents so that it gets passed on to new board members or the new property managers. And when you change, you would want to update that list. It's important that we always have who is the most current person responsible for operating your weir.